Hello, everybody! boys and girls. I'm not a big fan of deserts, but I'll do what it takes to protect my family and friends. And that includes you, Mr. Narrator. Thanks, Ollie. Last time, Jengu had to battle a giant octopus, only to have his niece and nephew captured by slavers and taken to Egypt, along with many other children. Both he and Ollie, along with Rupert, take off across the desert to save them any way they can. Which brings us to our next story, called Faster than the wind. Guys, guys, guys. I scouted all around and talked to some of the other birds. They said there was a large caravan with children headed through the Sinai towards Egypt. Egypt? How will we ever get to Egypt? If a camel can make it, so can I. You can load me up with water and... Yeah, and I'll fly ahead and scout the way. Yeah, with me looking, we're sure to find them. What are the three of us going to do against Egyptian kidnappers? What chance do we have? Only on my little whittling knife. God will give us a plan. Already he's shown us which way they're heading. And look, up ahead, there's a watering hole. Let's fill up all the goatskins and move out before they get too far ahead. Ah, don't forget the sesame seeds. Don't worry, we've got plenty. If we only know where they were headed, we could be waiting when they got there. I'll fly ahead and find out where they're going. Okay. Off we go. Are you Jonathan? Rupert, what are you doing here? Ollie and Jehu sent me to find you and your sister. Are you all right? No, we're going to be slaves in the palace of Ramses. Indeed you are. You better go. Mm. Wishes will punish me if I'm seen talking. <laughs> what did I say about talking? It was only a raven. I don't think so. Hey, come back here with my whip. Making a complete fool of yourself? Now get these children ready for the journey. That, that raven stole my whip. Well, perhaps you should quit. Taking out your anger on these children and try a little kindness. A slaver doesn't have to be cruel. <sighs> ah, ahoy there! Ahoy there! Rupert! Did you find them? Yeah, what happened to them? Now hold on! Just one question at a time. Yes, I found them. They have about a two-day head start. Anyways, that's about the best I can measure the speed you land creatures travel. Where are they being taken? To the palace of Ramses the Pharaoh. They're all to be his slaves. Slaves? Little Jonathan and Rhea? Slaves? That's not all. There's a bad man, Lucius, who was starting to beat Jonathan before I took his whip. Sounds like things are bad. But what if we could just infiltrate the palace? Hold on. That's awful risky. We're all liable to end up in the stew.
plenty of water. It looks like a large group was passing by this way. I wonder. Guys! Holly! Jail! Ah! Oh, I found this over by the trail! There's a note in it! Let's see. The Curse of the Pharaoh. There is one way to break the curse of the Pharaoh of Egypt. You must win the race before the children die in scores. Approach the Pharaoh's throne and make your intention known. Only one whose heart is free from fear will break the curse that is settled here. Race? What kind of race? I haven't heard of any race. I don't want to see the Pharaoh. I'm afraid. I'm not afraid. I just wonder, uh, who left this note for us? It must have been the one nice man with the slavers. The cook. I sent him to help little Jonathan. Well, we'd better make haste. Where would this palace be anyway? That's well, as easy as finding the tombs, silly. Don't you know the Egyptians built the pyramids as their tombs? Anybody can spot one of those. Why, they're as plain as the nose on your face. Maybe your face, but not mine. The children approach the walled city of the pharaoh. Rhea, don't worry. God's not going to leave us. Jonathan, I'm scared. Look, little girl. Maybe you and your brother can help me in the kitchen. I'm not so bad. I miss my mommy. You, little girl. I thought I said no whimpering. <laughs> Stop right now or I'll give you something to really whimper about. You're really something, scaring little girl. Bet you think you're something, scaring little girls, playing tough with a whip like you're the king of the world. Didn't your mama teach you? It's not too nice. Don't be a fool, big guy. Listen to my advice. Don't touch little girls, or you'll be in danger. Well, don't touch little girls. They got big, big angels. Whoa! Life's too short for hatred, too short to be cruel. Life was made for loving, it's God who made the rules. You always will be someone who's tougher than yourself. You better watch out before you swing, vengeance is all his. Don't touch little girls, or you'll be in danger. Well, don't touch little girls, they've got big, big angels. Whoa! <coughs> Why, you! Lucius, you have a problem. Look at how big you are picking on these children. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mm -hmm. Besides, you can forget about these two. They'll be helping me in the kitchen. See ya. Bye, Nasty Man. Very well, then. But if you two ever get out of line, I know where to find you! Thanks for saving us from that mean man. Yeah, he was really going to hurt me. I was taken from my parents when I was young. I spent my whole life here. Sometimes I wonder what happened to my brothers and sisters. You're big enough. Couldn't you go home? I don't even remember where that was. How can you go home when you don't know where it is? She used to give. I don't know where I'm from, don't know my real name. So, how can you go home when it's no? Cry, Ponifer. I miss my mommy and daddy. Well, at least you can remember yours. Our Uncle Drew is going to get us. As a matter of fact, he's probably on his way right now with Donkey Ollie and Rupert. Your uncle travels with a donkey? 
Yeah, but he's the bravest donkey in the whole wide world. Well, I could fly up and look around, but I don't know how you land creatures are ever gonna get in. Wow, look at that coming toward us. A real chariot, just like I've always dreamed about. That horse is sure running fast. You there, are you from another country? Yes, we're from Bethany outside of Jerusalem. Hebrews? My father doesn't care too much for Hebrews. Your father? Yes. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ramses the Eleventh. My father is Pharaoh. If you are a prince, where are your bodyguards? My bodyguards? Why, the last time I looked, they were running one side of me. But that was about an hour ago. <laughs> your horse doesn't look too well. Huh? Who said that? I did. If you continue to run this poor horse like that, he'll be lame. How did you do that? Do what? You know, talk, silly. I can talk and I can sing. I've got a lot to say. But when I see a horse like this, about to end up lame. Don't be a ruler, no one's not out of serve. Don't be a leader who doesn't keep his word. You talk as well? Yeah, but I've got something to say. We've been traveling for a few days and we've got nowhere to stay. We came here to rescue my niece and nephew. They were brought here to be slaves for your father. My father will never let them go. I told you, he doesn't like Hebrews. Ever since Moses. Can you find us a place to stay? Sure. Would you like to ride in my chariot? Only if you go slow. Ollie's fast, but not like your horse. Very well. We have a little summer palace by the Nile where we train chariot racers. You can stay there. I really can't help your nephew or niece, but I can find out where they are and get a message to them. Would you really? Sure. Would you let me bring Ollie and Rupert to the palace with me? I promise to take care of them. I just want to show them off to my friends. Well, Ollie, what do you think? I don't mind. Can Rupert come along? Yeah, if you really like chariots, Barshad can show you how to ride one. There are several at our place on the Nile, and the big races are coming at the end of the month. Races? Like in Rome? 
Better than Rome, the one coming up is the race of all races. <laughs> I've never seen anything so green! The Nile is the mother of life. Every year it overflows its banks, depositing tons and tons of rich silk. There's nothing that won't grow here. Uh, what about the crocodiles? We hunt them, and sometimes, uh, if you're not careful, they will hunt you. Uh -huh. Just remember, at uh -huh. night when the moon is spooky, and the owls begin to hoot, just stay away from the river, or you'll end up crocodile food. You can never hear them slither until it's much too late. They're faster than an antelope, and deadlier than a snake. Don't get any ideas about adventuring, Jehu. I've got my knife. I'm not afraid of no crocodile. Well, suck yourself. We're off to the palace. I'm sure there's no alligators there. There's a whole pool of them. Oh, Jehu, here comes Barshad. Maybe he'll show you how to drive a chariot, and you can be in the race. A chariot race? The one in the bottle? Indeed, I can help you win. But first, you must listen. <gasps> If you're quick to learn and listen, don't mind being bumped a bit. I can show you how to take a turn so fast it might make you sick. This race will be for keepers, jolly well, better listen up. I'll not take anyone under my wings who's afraid to show his stuff. <laughs> jolly well, we can do it our best. Jolly well, we'll be faster than the legions of hell. Jolly well, we'll win it, we'll give it our best. Jolly well, we'll be faster than the legions of hell. You've got to use your noggin, ah. take the cobwebs from your ears. Ah. Reach inside for fortitude, laugh in the face of fear. God can train your spirit to respond with discipline. If you want to find the strength to win, you've got to look within. Jolly well, we'll win it. Jolly well, we'll be faster than the legions of hell. Jolly well, we'll win it, we'll give it our best. Jolly well, we'll be faster than the legions of I really don't know. You've always wanted to. This is your chance. If you win, my father will give you anything you want. Anything? Even my nephew and niece? It's worth a try. You were right, Ollie. Barshad, I'm going to be the best chariot driver you ever trained. Tell Jonathan and Rant I'm going to win for them. Ollie, Rupert, and Ramses Jr. leave Jehu behind and head for the royal palace. <laughs> Ollie can barely contain the excitement of getting to see Rhea and Jonathan and tell them the good news about their Uncle Jayla. Cousin Ramses, your father has been sick with worry. He nearly had your servant's heads removed from losing sight of you. I wasn't lost. I knew where I was the whole time. Besides, how's a prince supposed to have fun anyways being followed around by tutors and servants? I want you to meet some of my new friends from Jerusalem. Your new friends? A raven and a donkey? But you'll see. I'm not from Jerusalem. I'm from Caesarea. Ollie's from Bethany. Well, pleased to meet you. I'm Alondra. He must have forgotten his manners. I'm Ollie. We came to find my niece and nephew. Oh, you talk as well. What are their names? Several scores of child slaves were brought in earlier today. Perhaps I know where some of them have been assigned. I'm somewhat in charge of that. Somewhat. My mother was brought here as a slave. She is from Beersheba, birthplace of King David. I know how hard it must be on them. What are their names? Rhea and Jonathan. I think those were two of the lucky ones. They are palace slaves under the supervision of the kindly chef Potiphar. The other ones work like zombies in the Pharaoh's field. This is remarkable, Prince, that you have returned with two talking pets. We're not pets! 
We're friends! That's a big, big difference! Yeah, we serve people because we like them. Nobody makes us do anything or even orders us around. We're free. Years ago, I had to work on a farm, but now I'm free, and I owe it all to Jesus. Jesus? I've heard of him. The carpenter from Galilee that claims to have risen from the dead? I don't believe it. I was there. It's not just a claim. He came, and he wiped away my tears. I was there when they took him to the cross. I was there and took him to his tomb. I felt so broken hearted, couldn't eat for days. Then I heard this soothing voice and looked into his face. like that. I believe it now. I do too. Ollie and Rupert have made some good friends, but will it be enough to save Jonathan and Rhea? Only time will tell. Here it is, kids. What you've been waiting for. Farmer John's Corner. I was noticing that there were a lot of horses in today's episode. I love horses. In fact, I'm meeting today with someone who knows a lot about horses. I hope she's here now. Let's go look for it. Jan? 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 Farmer John, over here! Jan! Oh, there you are! Oh, hello! This is Lucky. Hi, Lucky. Oh, what a nice horse. Thank you. What a beautiful horse. Jan knows a lot more about horses than I do. So I was going to ask you some questions. What do they eat? I mean, well, can you feed them just anything or grass well, or their, what? Their main food is grass. But a racehorse like Lucky needs a lot more energy. He's a so racehorse. She was a racehorse. Oh, she. Yeah. She. She. Um, she loves clover, but she has this, which is alfalfa. It's a type of hay that has a lot more protein in it to keep those strong muscles going. And then the other thing that she likes to eat is grain. This has like corn and oats and barley in it, and she likes different kinds of grain. And um, she likes that for extra energy. 
Are horses all the same, or do they have different oh, personalities? No, oh, no, they have I very know the different personalities. <laughs> Lucky is a very sweet, very loving horse. Some horses are a little more standoffish. Some like other horses much better than people. Some of them are like big dogs. <laughs> Some of them act more like <laughs> kitty cats. Some of them just don't like people. They're all different. Some are really laid back. Some have a lot of energy. Ooh, would you like some of that? Can I have my fingers back? Thank you. She <laughs> is measured at the shoulder. Like this. Right here is the shoulder. This is the shoulder. It's called the withers. And you measure a horse from the ground to the withers. And you don't measure them in feet or inches or even centimeters, Farmer John. You measure them in hands. And a hand is like this. It's four inches. And Lucky is over 16 hands at the shoulder. Well, thank you, Jen. You're very welcome, Farmer John. Come by anytime. In our next episode, Jehu learns that the lives of his niece and nephew depend upon his skills at driving a chariot in the biggest race of all. That's next time on The Adventures of Donkey Ollie. Thanks for coming. See you next time. <laughs>